Howdy, boys and girls, and welcome back to the Carla and Crappy Show Week 2 of the 2014 season. I'm in Pittsburgh. I'm Crappy. She is in Nashville. She's Carla. Hi, Carla. Hi, Crappy. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing this week? Not too bad. You survived that first weekend? Uh, I, I, I did my best to overdose. Um, I, that was like, what, nine straight days of football? <laughs> At least it felt like it. Oh, they did, no, that part was awesome, and, and I was able was to, awesome. uh, you know, watching like a... a, a uh, even on Sunday, watching uh, the hour-long replays on the Big Ten Network of all the Big Ten games I didn't get to see, that was, it, I just, it was, I was disgusting. That's all we could get. It was fabulous. Well, and, and, and you see, Sunday night was the big deal down here because that was mm -hmm. the UT game, our UT, sure. not the other UT. Sure. Um, so that was like, you know, the only game in town that night, so that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, nice to see that game get some attention for a change. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, I, I mentioned the Big Ten, and it's worth bringing up again this week because, uh, Perhaps more than more so than any other week um, this season, maybe in, until bowl season. This is the this is the week where the Big Ten actually can make a statement about uh, improved play, and it's one of those things: you, you you do it or you don't. And if the Big Ten wants to uh, uh, to kind of change, start to change perceptions, um, the Big Ten teams have some big games coming up this weekend, and uh, they need to come up with some wins. Um, perhaps not uh, among those marquee games, but we do want to start uh, in Happy Valley. Um, the home home opener for Penn State uh, after the, uh, they were victorious in Ireland. They host the uh, the Zips of Akron. They're 14 point favorites. Um, what do you think? Well, several things on this game actually, and I, I didn't put a lot of notes on this, but I yes, I was a crazy person and got up at 7 a.m. last Saturday so I could watch kickoff of that game. Mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of good things that I saw from Penn State, and I tweeted this during the during the game. Um, how much I love Hackenberg and the hurry-up offense. Yeah. Love the tempo. Um, and that's a James Franklin thing. I mean, that's how he was successful here at Vanderbilt, was he installed that tempo offense, and it worked really, really well. Um, and it looks like the Penn State offense is going to kind of adapt to that that same kind of feel. And, and in the first half, looked fantastic in mm -hmm. running the hurry-up. Um, Hackenberg was solid the entire game. Mm -hmm. Here are my problems. One, there was no run game whatsoever. None. Right. And and that's that's huge. I mean, yeah, it was just USF. Not you know, okay, yeah, they they got through, they survived, they got the win. Um, but when you start playing some legitimate defenses, the fact that you're not running the ball, and I mean, Penn State is known for shove it down your throat, run the ball. Yes. Like that was you know, and and I love the hurry up, but you've got to be able to run. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is the USF when they switched quarterbacks, which again, how did they not start that guy to begin with? Um, <laughs> Yeah, that, I, I mean, seriously, like, you know, but he came in and he exploited the Penn State secondary, mm -hmm. 100%, and that's another problem, and that's a problem that we all kind of knew coming in this season, that the secondary was going to be an issue. Here's the thing, Akron, yeah, they're in the MAC, but they're not just a lowly MAC team, they're a team that's expected to contend for the title. They have an experienced quarterback coming back who had a heck of a week last week. Now, granted, it was against Howard, you know, okay, we got to measure that for what it's worth. Howard's, Howard's a nice guy too. I don't know why everyone <laughs> wants to pick on Howard, but but I know. And, but so it's interesting that now they're coming off of this. I know I'm trying to keep a straight face, and you're laughing at me. And this is not fair. Um, Penn State's coming off of being in Ireland, jet lag, mm -hmm. right? Short preparation week at home against an Akron team that can throw the football. Yes. This is a dangerous recipe regardless of the fact that the game is being played in Beaver Stadium. Because here's the other thing. Penn State always lays an egg in one game every year. Mm -hmm. Right? Head scratcher. James Franklin always has a head scratching game at Vanderbilt. This is a prime candidate for a head scratcher. Okay. I think Penn State's going to win the football game. But I think we're going to be sitting in the first half going, what the heck are they doing? Um until they get it figured out. So Penn State wins, but I think this one isn't one that you should just kind of scoff over and say this is a cupcake. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a MAC team, but I think I think this could this could be interesting. Penn State wins, but I think it's a lot closer than the line says. Okay, okay. I, I know from watching MAC teams come into Ohio Stadium, if and 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 generally they are they are good enough uh, that you know if the home team is not paying attention completely, um, you you can have an interesting game for a half or for longer. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and that there's, there certainly is a potential for that. Um, the offense, I, I don't, I don't know how much, it, I mean, you know James Franklin better than I do. I don't know how much of the, uh, the lack of a run game, uh, last weekend for Penn State was, uh, was a system thing or if there are actual problems there. 
Um, well, the, the line is young. I mean, that's yeah, a big deal. Yeah. So. Um, and and I, I, I know how that goes as well. Um, <laughs> but I, I see. I, I I see. I think that the the, the two touchdown line is a, is is probably pretty close uh, to where it should be. Um, and maybe maybe there is a slow start to the uh, the game. You know the. Uh, you alumni get a little frustrated, um, but uh, by halftime or, or start of the third quarter, I think things uh, things loosen up and Penn State does what Penn State is supposed to do. Hey, speaking of young offensive lines, um, <laughs> we, uh, we you know we next, about those. Yes, we next we next go to um, uh, Columbus, the game that I will be attending. Uh, this this is this is one of the unfortunate ones uh, that that looked terrific when it was scheduled ten years ago. Uh, Ohio State hosting Virginia Tech. Um, it, it's it, it's still not going to be a bad game, um, and Ohio State is a uh, I think an eleven point favorite uh, somewhere somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, Carl, what do you think? Um, what I saw about from Ohio State last weekend is a team that struggled against the, tri- the against the triple option. That's not uncommon. Everybody, everybody struggles yes. against that stupid offense, right? I mean, it makes you wonder why more teams don't don't implement it because everybody struggles with it. Um, that's true in the high school game, too. There's a lot of high school teams that are now re-implementing the triple option because nobody plays it anymore, and so it's impossible to defend. That being said, I, I actually was, was relatively impressed with J.T. Barrett. Um, I think he had a solid game, especially if you just look at the numbers and don't look at the, and don't look at the tape. His mm-hmm. numbers are fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, he really looked like he got comfortable when he threw that deep ball in yep. the third quarter. Here's the thing about Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech plays defense. Mm-hmm. Navy plays defense, but not like a Virginia Tech defense. Um, so I think a, a solid start is going to be key in this. The other thing that is key is that they are playing at home. They're going to have the home field advantage, which is huge um, in this game. Virginia Tech last week, okay, so they played William & Mary, so we're, we're still in cupcake season. They played William & Mary. Um, again, again, very nice people. Um, they live yes. like, down, down the street from Howard. Relatives actually. of mine, actually. Yeah. I have relatives named both William and Mary. Never mind. Um, they call them Bill and Mary in Williamsburg, yes. Um, yes. which I love. Uh, <laughs> Virginia Tech very inconsistent on de- on offense last year. That was their big thing. Like they're they've all Beamer always has a solid defense. Um, offensively, they just didn't know who they were last year. Apparently, this past week they they threw some new freshmen into the mix and they performed well again against William and Mary. So this will be a good test for them, too. Um, Ohio State wins this game, um, but I think we're really going to see the potential in, in Barrett this week. What what is that kind of where you're thinking this is going to go? Uh, I'm, I'm less concerned about Barrett than I am about the offensive line. Um, yeah. there, it's hard to tell what, what you actually learned last weekend. Uh, there's some stuff that I saw that's really cool. Uh, and, and Barrett, uh, and it is obvious, um, uh, his ability and uh, his temperament um, – it just seems so relaxed to, to you know to, 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 to know for two weeks you're going to be uh, the starting quarterback for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Um, uh, his composure was really impressive. Um, there there were there were play calling things, and some of this is designed to to take the load off of Barrett, I'm sure. Uh, but the play calling things and, and obvious personnel things that that Urban Meyer has not been able to do at Ohio State to this point. Um, uh, I will be very curious to see uh, like a, a, a Dontre Wilson. Um, how he is used from this point forward. Uh, there were yeah. there's there some stuff that um, we, we got to see from him uh, that, that that one awful drop aside early in the game. Um, <laughs> but, but in the, the yeah yeah sure. Uh, there, the, I, I'm I'm curious to see how that's that's going to play out um, because there's some offensive things that I think will look a little bit different and, and would have looked a little bit different whether it's it's J T Barrett or Braxton Miller quarterback. Um, the other thing that I'm, I'm dying to see. Uh, I think Navy attempted four passes, maybe five, uh, last weekend. Um, I can't wait to see Ohio State's pass rush. Uh, I, I think uh, when when Navy tried to run the ball up the middle, um, it, it, you see you get glimpses uh, of the talent on Ohio State's defensive line. Um, when when we, uh, <laughs> we play a normal freaking offense that throws <laughs> the ball once in a while, um, I, I I hope. Uh, I'm excited to see what the pass rush is going to look like. I, I hope it's going to be as good as advertised. Um, again, uh, maybe maybe a, a touchy uh, first half, maybe touchy into the third quarter, um, and then I, I, I think uh, talent, I think home field um, uh, means Ohio State kind of pulls away at the end of this game. Um, next up, we have we, we have a bunch of late games. Ohio State's night game. Um, we have uh, on the West Coast. I'm not sure exactly what the start time of this for this one, but this is a uh, this is one of a couple of really big marquee matchups uh, for non-Big Ten people. Number 14, Southern Cal, 
at number 13, Stanford. Uh, tight, uh, Stanford's a three-point favorite at home, which means everyone thinks they're doing about even. Um, what, do you, what do you think? This game, there, there's a lot going on in this game. I, when, you, when you look across the board, and I get in trouble for saying this, um, because I was talking with, with the people down here about in the preseason stuff, and how I really think the Pac-12 this year can argue that they are the best conference in, in college football. Mm -hmm. I think top to bottom, they are the strongest this year. I'm very sorry, SEC, but I think they've just got the better depth in, in their teams. Um, no, note that they, I, am not, I am not apologizing to the SEC. I'm, yeah, well, I live in SEC country, so... I, I mean, sort of have to, yes. I, yeah, I don't really have a choice. There's an SEC school down the street. Like, okay. Um, but no, I really do, and I think this is going to be a year... We talked about this all the time, about how the SEC was going to beat up on each other, and it kind of happened last year yes. a little bit, yes. um, where everybody just kind of beat up on each other. That's the problem I see here. I see the Pac-12 potentially beating up on each other this year because everybody is so evenly matched. There are two really interesting storylines in this game. One is that USC upset Stanford last year. Mm -hmm. On a last-second kick, Stanford was kind of in line for, you know, potential discussion of, of BCS championship game. I mean, they're sitting there. They're number five when it happened, so they weren't quite there yet, but they were still in the mix. That knocked them out of the mix, yes. right? So there's some hard feelings there along that line. The other interesting thing is, is that for the last two seasons, Washington has given Stanford fits. Mm -hmm. They've played really, really close. Mm -hmm. Steve Sarkeesian led teams. Steve Sarkeesian now the head coach at USC. True, true. Um, so I see this game being at Stanford, essentially being a wash. I think Stanford is the better team. Mm -hmm. And I think Stanford should win the game. But I think USC does. Okay. Okay. What do you think? I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about what is going on at SC and in, in uh, off the field. Um, uh, the, the, the backup running back who quit right before the season started and saying Sarkeesian's a racist. You know, who knows what that is? Uh, and then um, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Shaw, Josh, Josh Shaw. Uh, in the suspension, and the, the weird thing about him not actually, you know, rescuing a, a bus yeah. for school children or whatever it was, <laughs> um, in the suspension, I, I maybe maybe I'm, I'm maybe I'm reading too much into this. It, it, that is that is quite possible. Um, but that's that is a lot of stuff to deal with. Um, yeah, if you're if you're playing Fresno State and you're you're Southern Cal, perhaps it's not a big deal. Sure. When you go on the road to Stanford, perhaps it is. Um, uh, again, evenly matched. Uh, with, with all of this crap going on with Southern Cal uh, off the field, um, I, I, I just have to wonder about uh, what, what kind of mind frame they're going to be in. I mean, most of the guys will be ready to play, but but still, I I think uh, going on the road, I think potential for distraction with with uh, with that stuff, particularly with, with Josh Shaw, who was a who was a captain. Um, I, I, I I think uh, uh, Stanford holds up and, and wins, perhaps a tight game, but uh, but wins this one at home. Um, we have. I have to get back to my list. <laughs> See, now this is what this is. I told you I was going to screw this up because I'm using two computers here. Um, we have also uh, this, and this is when you when you talk about uh, put up or shut up for the Big Ten. Uh, perhaps this is the game of 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 the of certainly of the week and perhaps of the season. Uh, yeah. Michigan State at Oregon. Uh, Oregon is a twelve and a half point favorite. Um, don't know really about Michigan State's defense. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into my spiel. Carl, you, Carl, you, go, you go ahead and, and take a um, see what you think. Yeah, I'll see, I'll see what I, I can <laughs> finish my part of this. I, this is, you can't get a read on this game ahead of time because both, both schools played cupcakes last week. Mm -hmm. um, defeated them handily, which is what you're supposed to do with a cupcake. And so this, I, this is a huge first test. Um, what did I write down here? I wrote down that... Michigan State, based on what everybody said coming in, you're right, we don't know the defense. In theory, they're so good. Mm -hmm. um, but we've not actually seen them in action this year. What I love about Michigan State in this game is the fact that there's a lot of experience coming back from this team that went to the Rose Bowl last year, went into Pac-12 territory, and said, we can hang with you and beat Stanford. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference between a Stanford offense and an Oregon offense. Agreed. Yes. Um, yes. That difference in tempo and the whole bit, and you know, like Michigan State and Stanford were essentially mere images of each other, and you know, so okay, there's a huge difference there. 
But D'Antonio had his kids fired up mm -hmm. all season long, motivating them, saying, we can go to the Rose Bowl and we can win. They're going to come in with that same mentality. They're not going to be afraid of Eugene. Mm -hmm. We know that for a fact because they weren't afraid coming into the, you know, a very heavily Stanford-friendly sure. Rose Bowl sure. at the time. Um, Oregon, <laughs> Marcus Mariota, still around. Like, you know, is he, what, an eighth-year senior at this point? No. Um, I mean, he, he turned down a, a, a chance to go to the NFL right. to play for a national title mm -hmm. and to potentially go for the Heisman. That's why he's here. Um, so he's got a lot riding on this game. You know, Connor Cook last week for, for Michigan State, excellent week, excellent quarterback, tweaked his foot, mm -hmm. um, caused everybody to panic for a while, but played the rest of the game and looked fine. And, and yeah, and we haven't heard anything much about this injury for the rest of the week, so you've got to figure he's going to be good to go. I mean, there, it would take a lot for him to not play in this game. You know, I, you know, I feel like I'm talking in circles here. We talk... Every year about Clemson, not Clemsoning mm -hmm. itself. Right. Clemson, this is your year. <laughs> yes. I, I think we have to say that with Michigan State this year in the Big Ten. If okay. they're going to do it, this is the year to do it. This is the team to do it. Mm -hmm. if, it was, if it was in East Lansing, without a question, I'm taking Michigan State in this game. We'll get that opportunity next year. Okay. Um, because it's a home and home. Which yeah. is awesome. So yeah. we get to see this matchup again next year, um, probably with two different quarterbacks. But that's besides the point. I think this is the year finally the pen, that the uh, Big Ten gets off the off the Schneid and finally gets that big win. We were so close with Wisconsin last week mm -hmm. um, that I think Michigan State does it. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm gonna agree. Uh, and and there's a, the, the historic precedents. Uh, for this, um, I, you know, in my experience, I know it goes back to uh, with the uh, the Rose Bowl game that, that uh, never happened uh, with our with our Ohio State's tattoo team uh, beating Oregon. I, I, they, the, the, the Ducks struggle with uh, physical matchups. Um, they, have, uh -huh. they, have they have struggled against Stanford uh, um, recently. They they struggled in that that Rose Bowl game against Ohio State um, when when they are presented with a team. Um, that that uh, has that that kind of persona, they they have a difficult time, and, and that 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 is the very embodiment of what of what uh, Mark D'Antonio uh, wants his teams to be. Um, being on the road is tough. Um, yeah. But I, I I and and you know you still have questions about uh, you know whether or not the Spartans were able to replace the the defensive talent that they had a year ago. Um, I'm 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 gonna maybe maybe this is more hopeful than anything, but I'm gonna go with Sparty. Uh, and, and, and pick Michigan State to win on the road. Carla, it's funny you mentioned before we started taping about um, me just kind of randomly uh, picking a mystery game and throwing it out there. As I was looking at the schedule, I mean, there's one more that we cannot pass up. We're going to do this very, very quickly. You're going to give me a pick, and you're going to give me one sentence as to why. Okay. Michigan at number 16, Notre Dame. Notre Dame's a five-point favorite. I can I, I always have a hard time feeling any sort of confidence in Notre Dame. Michigan wins. Okay. Okay. Um Michigan's not ready. Notre Dame okay. wins Notre Dame wins at home. That was I, uh, I'm going to riff on this, and we're going to go over our time now because this was the thing. So I was listening to Sirius on the way in the church on Sunday morning because that's what I yeah. do. I listen to college football recaps while I'm driving in. And yeah. Chris Childers, who hasn't actually been on the show but a good friend, um, said that he, he brought up a really good point about how Michigan fans should feel optimistic at this point. Even though they just went out and did what they needed to do against the cupcake, they struggled against cupcakes the last two seasons. Yes. Right? This time they went out and did what they were supposed to do against the cupcake. And so for mm -hmm. the first time, you've got to say, you know what, maybe there's hope this year. Mm -hmm. Which is a true statement. I think that's the kind of, there's, there's some more optimism up in Ann Arbor right now. After, hey, we did what we were supposed to do. Okay. Okay. And Notre Dame's going to be tired. True. They were in Ireland. True. true. With my Nittany Lions. I don't, I don't like any of these people, so... I don't either. I, I feel your pain, but it'll be ten. <laughs> okay, that's fair. That's fair. Um, and, and and actually, and I, I I would I would hope that the uh, the team up north actually wins this game. 
um, for that reason. But I, I suspect my, my, my nagging my nagging thing is that they're just they're they're not quite there yet. Um, that should do it for week five. We have we got five games in there for week two uh, we of the 2014 season. Uh, guys, we will see how uh, we do with our picks. Uh, we will see how we do with the games. Uh, Carla, enjoy it. You too. It's not going to be any fun without. It's all in one day now, right? Like, yeah. can we yeah. go back to the five-day schedule? That was awesome. <laughs> and I'm going to and I'm going to be tailgating through the whole thing. So uh, that's that's uh, the whole different level of fun. Guys, <laughs> thank you, thank you very much for watching. We will see you back here next week. See you, Carl. See ya.